What's good, y'all? Your boy Ross back at again with another video. So I'm gonna check out Secret WWE Royal Rumble rules you never knew existed. This is the week of the 2024 Royal Rumble, so we're gonna be checking out a lot of Royal Rumble related clips and content. I'm also gonna be doing my preview and predictions later on this week. We also will be doing the Monday Night Raw uh, live stream and the Friday Night uh, SmackDown live stream and the Royal Rumble live stream as well so uh yeah get look forward to some a lot of royal rumble content on the main page my personal page it's gonna be a great week man looking forward to the 2024 royal rumble this should be a very interesting video by wrestlemania let's see if i know some of these quote-unquote secrets appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on the channel let's get right into this one man 1988. The Royal Rumble has become one of the most popular and commercially successful matches in WWE history. The rules for the annual matchup are simple, yet over the years, WWE have introduced an amended set rules, meaning there are numerous unwritten rules that are officially canon to the Royal Rumble match. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 9 WWE Royal Rumble rules you never knew existed. This should be a very interesting one, man. Make sure y'all subscribe to WrestleMania. Link to the original video will be down below. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new website, WrestleMania.com. Number nine, multiple gimmicks from the same wrestler can enter the match. Yep, like man, it's uh, right state mankind. That it's one entry oh, per Mick person Foley for did. the Royal Rumble. Yet this doesn't apply to gimmicks. In 1998, uh -huh. Mick Foley entered the match using three distinct characters and this was legally allowed as technically yeah. it was three different entities entering the match. This meant that in theory, Kane could enter the Royal Rumble match as Mass Kane and then re-enter as Corporate Kane. Mm -hmm. But this has only ever been done in one single Rumble match and it's likely to never be replicated as a single wrestler taking up multiple spots in the match will no doubt lead to severe backlash online. Yeah, of course. Number eight, you can get disqualified. <clears throat> the WWE seemed to have flip-flop between whether the Royal Rumble matchup is no DQ. The match has seen that numerous weapons can be used, including in 2001 when an entire section of the acclaimed match was dedicated to hardcore antics. Whenever weapons were used in the match, it was just assumed that the match was a no DQ encounter and no wrestler could be penalized. However, in 2008, Finley was disqualified from the Rumble match. He would enter the match before his allocated slot to attack Mark uh -huh. Henry and Big Daddy V, and because Finley did this and used a weapon, he was disqualified from the match. It appears that wrestlers are allowed to use weapons if they enter at their allocated number. However, any early involvement in the ring action could potentially result in subsequent disqualification. The Didn't rules even know that. this remain complex as in 2003, Christian was involved in Chris Jericho's scheme to distract Shawn Michaels early on in the match and Christian was still allowed to re-enter the match when his time came. This could likely be explained that because Christian didn't physically enter the ring, then he didn't count as an attempt to enter the annual matchup. Number seven, you can enter at your own. Yep, that, I mean, I, I guess if you want to, you know, I guess you could say that. It's crazy because they have used weapons before, but I do remember Finley using that shillelagh. He got disqualified. Pleasure. It's often the case that wrestlers charge to the ring when their music hits, yet this isn't a set rule that wrestlers must follow. Over the years, wrestlers have smartly taken their time to enter the matchup mm -hmm. and some of them have even decided to rest on the outside or even deliver commentary. In 1991, it was mentioned in passing that a wrestler has until the next entrant to make his way into the ring, yet this was never enforced in any subsequent years and obviously this rule implies that the number 30 entrant had an entire calendar year to enter the matchup. <laughs> the WWE has to limit these kind of spots as yeah. if every wrestler just stalled on the outside of the ring, it would make for an awkward and bizarre matchup. Yeah. Yet nevertheless, it's an indeed a rule that wrestlers don't have to immediately enter the action. Nope. Number six, if you're sick, you don't get replaced. If a wrestler is injured on the day of the show, they will usually be replaced. However, it looks like different rules <laughs> apply to illness. In 1994, Bastion Booger was set to make his entrance, yet he never showed up. It was later explained that Booga had food poisoning. In reality, WWE didn't replace Booga as the roster was unbelievably thin and Booga oh. had legitimately no-showed the event. However, in the kayfabe world of pro wrestling, they seem to imply that the illness means that the wrestler's spot remains open, just in case they can make the very last second. Number five, can you actually- Yeah, they'll, they'll replace you nowadays because they have plenty of people they can put in that spot. Even if it's, even if it's a person that doesn't 
they didn't plan on having anything prominent for them to do in the Royal Rumble. They will find a random fucking JAG in the back to put in that spot if you're not able to go. The only time they'll have to really do some moving around is if it's someone that they had plans for within the Royal Rumble or maybe like the last few competitors or maybe even the winner. Then they're going to have to do some some major moving around and plans will change. Play eliminate yourself. Uh, over the years, numerous wrestlers have eliminated themselves in order to attack an arch rival. <laughs> However, it was once explicitly stated that wrestlers aren't permitted to do this. In 1992's Rumble, Macho Man Randy Savage jumped over the top rope to attack Jake Roberts and the commentary team stated that Savage had been eliminated. However, this was a botch and Savage wasn't actually supposed to be eliminated. This meant that WWE had no choice but to call an audible and literally change the Rumble rules as they went along. Oh. Due to his botch, the WWE commentary team would then declare that because Savage wasn't literally thrown over the top rope, he was able to return to the match. It was very confusing and this yeah. rule hasn't been applied since. Number 4. There Can Only Be One Winner The 1994 Royal Rumble was historic as it saw two wrestlers win the Royal Rumble for the first time ever. Both Bret Hart and Lex Luger fell out of the ring at the same time and as a result it was declared that both men would be heading to WrestleMania. However, over a decade later at the uh -huh. 2005 Rumble, when both John Cena and Batista fell out of the ring at the same, same time, time. Yeah. it was ruled that the match needed to be restarted as only one man could win and headline WrestleMania. The kayfabe explanation <laughs> of this rule is that it's down to the president of the company at the time of the incident. <laughs> Sneak of Vince tore his fucking quads. <laughs> it's not funny, but just seeing Vince, Vince McMahon, Sitting in the ring because he tore his quads getting in the ring, bro. And he had to sit there and bark orders. Sitting. It's it's a crazy visual, bro. For instance, in 1994, WWE President Jack Tunney made the executive call to have two winners. Then in 2005, it was Chairman Vince McMahon's call to restart the matchup. Uh -huh. So whilst in theory the rule is only one wrestler can win, history shows that the showrunner has ultimate authority in this regard. In 2012, WWE released a list of rules that fans weren't aware of, and in the rules, they outright stated that if two men win the Rumble, then the acting authority figure doesn't just have the power to crown one or both men as a winner, they can restart the match with all 30 competitors. There always must be a winner in the Royal Rumble match, but what if the last two participants are eliminated at the same time? Two specific incidents in Rumble history caused WWE to insinuate a peculiar contingency plan to give the general manager or commissioner more flexibility when tasked with making a very tough call. While it's proven to be a rare occurrence, there's no doubt this kind of scenario creates a lot of confusion and leaves one superstar thinking he may have been robbed of a victory. What better way to assure even odds and keep the WWE Universe on its toes than to make the final two participants fight 28 other superstars over again? After all, who wouldn't want to witness double the Royal Rumble match madness in one night? Now that's people power. Number 3 No. Restart the match with these last two and get it over with. You can build a story off of that. You can literally build a story off of that. Just off that alone. Someone can have a gripe like, bro, we fell out at the same time. I think I fell first, only for them to restart the match, and then he throws me over, you know, make some excuse. You can build off of that. You can literally build off of that. Don't don't restart the match. Hell no. No. You gotta get everybody back out there. No. Three, you can use anything to avoid elimination. One of the most exciting elements of the World Rumble match is seeing how wrestlers avoid elimination. Names such as Kofi Kingston and Naomi have made lasting memories, avoiding elimination in some of the craziest ways imaginable. And the best thing about these spots is that they're totally legal. Uh -huh. Wrestlers are permitted to use any weapons or objects around the ring area to avoid elimination, and they can seemingly also use outside wrestlers for help to stay in the ring. Number two, you can legally attack. A no more Kofi spots. I think we the Kofi spots need to be retired. Maybe someone else does it. The past few years, they haven't been. He hasn't been able to really do them. Um, so I think the Kofi spots, you can retire them. They've been a novelty for many, many years, but I think it's time to retire the Kofi saving himself spots. A Royal Rumble <clears throat> participant. 
and being part of a Royal Rumble is a huge opportunity for a WWE wrestler. Yet in kayfabe, a wrestler can legally have their spot in the Rumble taken away from them. Yeah. Numerous instances of this have occurred over the years, notably in 1999 when Headbanger Marsh was about to make his entrance, he was attacked backstage by Mabel. Mabel then simply walked down to the backstage area to the ring and WWE even played Mabel's theme, thus applying he was illegally allowed and a wrestler can be attacked backstage That's and replaced so by their up, attacker. Bro. A truly crazy rule if you think about it. A similar incident occurred in 2004 when Tess was laid out backstage by Mick Foley. This time, Stone Cold Steve Austin directly ordered Foley to get in the ring and replace Tess, and this seemed to imply that it's a condition that the attacker must replace the original Royal Rumble entrant. So wild, Almost bro. identical rules apply when it comes to stolen numbers, as in 2005, Kurt Angle simply stole Nuncio's number backstage, and this was legally allowed, despite Angle already having a world title match on the show. And number one, it's, 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 it's wrestling. The same thing happened with R Truth. He got attacked by Nia Jackson. She just took his spot in the men's Royal Rumble match. Imagine you, you get excited, you, you got your number, you're about to go out there, and someone says, Hey, you, pal. You turn around and they throw a steel chair at your face. Now you're concussed. And then they play their music as they walk down the ramp, and you just shit out of luck. And a lot of times, nothing happens. They For people that get attacked and can't go into the match, nothing happens. They just forget about it that, that same day, the next day. They, they don't even remember. Like, they don't even try to get their revenge. I'll be thinking that's a, per, a great story setup. You took my Royal Rumble spot. You didn't even do nothing with it. You took me out the match before I can get in the match. I'm about to beat the crap out of you. Most of them, they just, oh, well, okie doke then. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's a crazy rule, bro. Such a crazy thing. <laughs> One, you can outright request to replace an injured wrestler. In 2019, as an injured Lana was hobbling to the ring, Becky Lynch came out and requested that she should be the one to replace Lana in the match. This was then approved by Finley, and Lynch was allowed to enter the match, and she went on to win the whole thing. However, what would happen if multiple wrestlers began to fight for the spot? Would Finley have to just pick one at random? Yeah. What would happen if Lynch simply attacked Lana? Interestingly, at the same show, Nia Jax attacked our truth on the entrance ramp and she proceeded to enter the men's yep. match. <clears throat> this obviously implied that wrestlers can still be attacked and subsequently replaced even when they're entering the match. However, if Jax went on to win the match, the official status of a win would be up for debate and the imaginary WWE rulebook would have to surface. They have the imaginary Rumble rules. WWE rule book, bro. It's really imaginary. It's not fucking a real thing. Once again, you can attack someone on the way to being in the match, and then you get replaced. You play, take their spot. Or if someone is just injured, they can't even get in the match, hey, I'll take her spot. You know what? Go ahead. Take her spot. What? <laughs> There's no fucking rules, bro. <laughs> Oh my god, man. That's that's hilarious, man. Comment down below. Let me know. What's your favorite Royal Rumble uh spot that you can remember? Um from just any Royal Rumble in the past. What's your like your favorite spot? One of my favorite spots is when uh Maven eliminated the Undertaker. Oh my god, the crowd went crazy. JR went crazy on commentary. The Undertaker sold it because you didn't think that was going to happen. And oh my goodness, the carnage he suffered from the wrath of The Undertaker was just diabolical, bro. That's one of my favorite spots because the crowd went crazy. I think that's probably one of the biggest pops Maven has ever had only for him <laughs> to get destroyed in the process. <laughs> the Undertaker murdered him. He murdered him, legitimately murdered him because of it. He, no, he was doing, he was doing his job. <laughs> oh my God, that was a crazy spot. But comment down below, let me know your favorite Royal Rumble spot of all time. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on the channel. Road to 150K and I'm still young, speedy YouTube wrestling champion of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking it with me. See y'all next one. Peace.